Pontius, Act 3. It is the same setting as in Act 1. The chorus, watching Christ led up the steps, this time in Herod's regal red and gold robe. Can Pilate now know this chameleon the prisoner? He sent forth a beggar, and by return comes a king. Shall this hardened Roman heart bend before Herod's robe of bloody hue? Pontius and Jesus are both on the upper platform. Dear prisoner, I had thought not to see you again so soon. Have you added to your list of crimes the theft of Herod's morning costume? Christ is silent. How engineered you that? Stolen it, I deduce, for what had the likes of you to offer in exchange for such heavy and expensive silks? Christ is silent. How parted you, old Herod, from his kingly accoutrements, not by vulgar sleight of hand, not in that crowd, can a tongue apparently so averse to exercise have levitated this garment off the shoulders of a king? But these my soldiers heard you not utter once. What unique magic lifted this cloth? Christ is silent. Well, silent magic is certainly most impressive. I begin to see, Hans, that how one could come to fear this quiet prisoner. We know not the silent Jesus you speak of, my gracious Pilate. His is an active and violent tongue which only the cross can silence for good. Bear well in mind that a cross can destroy most voices, but only serves to amplify others. I do not completely comprehend your land's logic, my lord. Nor I yours. Consider, Hans, at one Roman dilemma. In our books, and yea, even in my own lifetime, I have watched our Roman banners spread across this world. Where we go, we Romans, we spread our masterful highways, called vainly by some the eighth wonder of the world. Along them we have strung crosses. A third of a million, tis said, and on them strung men, dead crows hung in trees to frighten the flocks. Yet is the world more secure for it? Multitudes of these Jesus have we stretched in the air, but it did not destroy the citizen's hunger for freedom, nor teach him obedient silence. How now shall Rome let the revolutionist rave unmolested? My orders are to destroy him. Hamza points at Christ, but faces Pilate. Then crucify him. Suddenly, from the crowd, a strong, vibrant, solo female voice speaks. Do not, Pontius. You dare not, Pontius. A tall, brave, lovely woman steps from the crowd. Her dress is a white gown trimmed liberally in gold. Pontius, looking down at the woman, speaks. What insolence and foolishness to so speak! Caesar appointed me judge in these serious matters, and not my fair spouse. You have thus been spared from the anguish all judges must undergo. Touch not your fair hand to this bloody business. I judge not, but I must speak. Have thou nothing to do with that just man? I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. We cannot save this man with a dream, my dear, a strong hand must move for him to survive, not the frail voice of a woman. To thy place, 
among those who touch not this tragedy. Pilate's wife returns to her place in the crowd. More magic, Jesu, walks your spirit in my very wife's dreams. In comparison with that feat, the appropriation of Herod's coat seems small. Christ is silent. What powers you do have for a simple carpenter? No wonder these self-appointed representatives of God do fear thee. Pontius pauses and approaches Jesus. Just a few feet from him, he stares in his eyes and says, with a sound of reverence, Art thou then the Son of a God? Christ is silent. Art thou then the King of the Jews? And Jesus says, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it to thee of me? Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from hence. Art thou a king, then? Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. What is truth? By your own words, my lord Pontius, the substance which runs from the lips of a fool. Let this man speak, now that at last he speaks. And to Christ he says, What is truth? But Christ remains silent. Pontius folds his arms. Speakest thou not unto me, Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Thou couldst have no power against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Pontius pauses, then he walks slowly to the front of the upper stage to address the crowd. Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people, and behold, I, having held court before you, having have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, Nothing worthy of death is done unto him. Hear ye, I find in him no fault. Yet our great Roman law demands his death. We Romans, however, are also guests in your land, and to your great tradition and wisdom must sometimes bow, so be it. It is the sacred time of your Passover, and I do know that the tradition here in Jerusalem does so demand that the governor release one man as the sign of general goodwill among men at this holy time. Therefore death shall take but one of the two condemned men I hold. The other will walk pardoned among you tonight. So consider well. Pontius motions to the far side where a prisoner stands between two guards. There stands Barabbas. And the chorus repeats, Barabbas. The murderer. The murderer. 
And here stands Christ, the carpenter, the king. So now which man shall walk free? Barabbas. And the chorus repeats. Barabbas. And the priest says, Release unto us Barabbas. And the chorus repeats, Release unto us Barabbas. Pontius gestures towards Christ. And what shall I do with this gentleman? And the priest says, Crucify him. And the chorus repeats, Crucify him. Pontius mutters, shakes his head in disbelief, then slowly walks back to his place near Christ, his back to the crowd. Heathens and barbarians do we Romans take under our banners, and thus it ends. Pontius turns to his clerk. Bring quickly a basin of clean water. Water is brought. Pontius rolls back his sleeves and washes his hands as he speaks. Say ye well, O eyeless mob. Were my voice law, this Jesu would walk among you again to teach you humanity. See that I do publicly wash my hands of this foul matter. The blood of this man be on your hands. Otto steps from the crowd on the lower stage and speaks. You waste your breath and water, O uncle. Only this shall they recall, that you were judge. And the man did die. All else will the brainless crowd forget and leave you villain of the peace. Ha 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 They shall not forget. The curtain descends to the sound of Otto's mad laughter.